Hey. Hey, everyone. What? <laughs> we have the left side just like totally into it and B Brad yeah. and Nick staring everyone else deer, down. Deer in the headlights. <laughs> yeah. This is live. What? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Excellent. A nice we, Saturday. We, yeah. Everybody having a good Saturday, a good weekend. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. How about yeah. you? Oh, it's great. Uh, <laughs> but I'm happy I'm here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So introductions. Uh, I'll, I'll start. We can go around. The, uh, my name is Todd. Uh, I like comic books. And my favorite comic book movie. Oh, I've been juggling it in my head because I wanted to spring this on y'all for an intro. No, that's <laughs> and not I, fair. I'm that's like, not, I didn't ah! think it, I put zero thought in, into it. And uh, my favorite things. comic book movie is. Hi, Sam. Guardians of Batman 1989. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we have a, a special guest today. First, first time on the show, V Rad. Gullickson, comic book, comic book counseling. What? What? Hello. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, long time listener, first time caller, <laughs> and my favorite comic book movie. We can talk about later. I don't want to. I don't want to introduce myself with my uh, terrible opinions immediately. Okay. <laughs> It'll get segued <laughs> into. <laughs> we'll we'll have that section off. Yeah. All right. I'm Nick, uh, and. I have no idea what my favorite comic book is. Just pick one. No. It is. Uh, it's gonna be. I'm gonna say it's. I'm. Go ahead. You tell me what it is. Daredevil. <laughs> no. The director's cut, though. Oh, yeah. Right. I, so oh, it's, okay. Well, hey. So it's, okay. So okay. <laughs> okay. I. I. Okay. <laughs> I, I'd be okay with that. <clears throat> it's one that. Probably most people would be like, boo. I just think it's mediocre is the it's only one of those. It's, a, it's biggest flaw is it's mediocre. You're talking Daredevil? Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. It's It's got that banging soundtrack, though, of like it's good. the early 2000s best new metal bands. Sure. I think Spider-Man, Rainy, the songs they could phone did it in. soundtrack better, though. My, okay. My favorite comic book movie is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, I mean, that's the one. Solid that's a good choice. Movie. There you go. I'm talking one. about soundtracks. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. It's my so second it's... favorite. Good night, everyone. <laughs> that's it. That was my <laughs> contribution. <laughs> <laughs> so, my turn. Hi, I'm Jamie, and um, I do this and write reviews on the website for everyonemedia.com. And my favorite comic movie we'll talk about later in the show like brad i don't want to give it away you know yeah you, you make people Whoa. stick around beyond the four minute mark for the good sure. stuff you know okay i think the good yeah. stuff is in the hearty conversation about the topic at hand but or it can be about our favorite movies either one. all about lists yeah, yeah like I know. Wording. Yeah, you know, if you lists. if you if you can't put it in the list you're not getting the clicks so like you know Sure. I, I, I was going to go with this so like people could filter in and we have a lighthearted conversation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's go with a different topic. Um, not favorite comic book movie. Least favorite. What's oh. your the first comic book movie you ever saw? Oh. Mm. Just re like remember? Yeah. What's the first one that you remember watching? Mine, I remember. I'll start off since I'm, I'm answering. It's Batman 1989, which is why that will probably always be like my like actual favorite one will always be like up in the air and everything, but my nostalgic, the one that makes me like, I love it every time and it makes me happy is mm -hmm. Batman 1989 because that like blew my mind as a kid. Um, okay. So that was my first. I, okay. I, I'll jump off that saying that I'm sure that was my first, uh, but the one that I remember is Batman Forever. Nice. And, <laughs> and, and I remember it specifically because there is a McDonald's less than a mile from my house and the Riddler coffee mug 
was one of the first things that I ever bought with my own money. Like I had some yes. money and I like snuck down to McDonald's and, and bought it. Coffee mug or the glass mugs? The glass mug. I have the whole set still and I have my Batman one still up with my glasses. because I'm, a- I'm waiting for the day that I go to like an antique shop and they have one for $3. I got a backup Batman so I can use it. Yeah. I wasn't using it for a while, but I got a second one. So I have one better. out to use. I was about to say, is that what you bust out when you have company over and you got to impress? <laughs> yeah, I got my you Green Lantern out, right? Pine glass and then Ooh. I have that. And yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. I get you, I get you. Yeah, we're living large here. Yeah, I got collectibles for glassware. What up? <laughs> I have the Riddler one just in the yes. kitchen. Because it's got the question mark for is it yeah. question mark for the handle, right? Yeah, the two, is the handle. Yeah, yeah Two Face had the coins, mm-hmm. and yeah, Batman was just kind of like a. Like I don't. A I don't remember one. any of the other. And then ones. Robin. I, wanted, I think it was Batman. I wanted the... Was it Batman? Rob? Because but Robin wasn't in it. But I feel like Robin was. One no, Robin was in it. Ben well, Fierce was in Robin. Yeah. Robin shows up in that one, yeah. But like, not it's not Batman and Robin. Like, yeah. it's not yeah, yeah. the the next one where it was a bigger thing. Yeah, um, I got all those glasses too. But yeah. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Batman Forever. That's solid. Yeah. I love me some Batman Forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm sure I saw uh, Batman. Eighty nine. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. I did. I can I don't vividly have memories of it remember seeing each and every one of those original four Batman movies in the theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can yeah. I can put myself in the line oh. of each of those movies. Mm-hmm. Awesome. But my first comic book movie had to have been Superman the movie. And I didn't see that mm-hmm. in the theater. I'm not that old. I'm almost that old. <laughs> um but uh I was like seventy eight. I, I yeah, mean seventy eight. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, 78. I'm almost that old. <laughs> Not to go to stand in line to go see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, caught it on TV and had a, a VHS recording off of TV mm-hmm. that I watched all the time. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Amazing. Um, I think the first one I remember would probably be Batman Forever. So, uh, like Nick, I think I do remember, though, talking about vivid memories, I do remember bugging my dad on the day he would visit me like because my parents were divorced at the time and he'd come he'd have visitation once a month i remember begging him to take me to batman and robin so that was my first comic book like in theater experience nice. was going to see that because i remember seeing it in, like the newspaper advertisement and going yeah let's go awesome and he's like okay like <laughs> here we go and like ate that Bye. shit up amazing yeah that forever was my first mm-hmm. uh, comic book movie in a theater. I I definitely yeah, remember that because I was so psyched because I had mm-hmm. seen Bat. I had my dad had the VHS for mm-hmm. Batman eighty nine, mm-hmm. well worn. Has mm-hmm. it's like I can picture it in my head. I'm so sad it doesn't exist anymore, but it has like the worn edges on it from just being like thrown around all the mm-hmm. time and out mm-hmm. and everything. I played that a bunch, and mm-hmm. then Forever was the first movie theater one yeah. and oh my god i thought it was fantastic and i still will defend it to this day <laughs> jim carrey's the best casting for riddler that's it uh, sorry new riddler <laughs> you're great <laughs> i do but, like the great uh, thing about batman and the batman movies especially as we've gotten several new ones and we're well beyond batman and robin and batman forever is that he, the character is such um, uh, a skeleton for any filmmaker mm-hmm. to lay mm-hmm. any kind of movie on top of. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. I think revisiting Batman Forever and Batman and Robin so many years later, I appreciate what Joel Schumacher was attempting with that movie, mm-hmm. and I think there's a lot of fun to be had in both of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. have to be. It's. It, I think it's. It gets a worse rap because Nolan's shaped so many people's opinion on what a good movie was yeah. that they look back on these and yeah. be like, well, this is everything Nolan's movies weren't. But mm-hmm. that doesn't make them bad. That just makes them different. Yeah. And it's okay yeah. that Batman can be fun and different and campy. Like, Batman and- has been campy, mm-hmm. for, started campy, <laughs> really. Mm-hmm. And then got serious. Yeah. And I feel like 
I feel like it, it also gets this bad rap of being like wrapped up in this idea of like they changed the Burton movies to be more marketable to toys and kids. Uh-huh. And you see so many people get pissy about like, oh, they're just giving like, they're just trying to sell toys with all these Marvel movies. It's like, okay, but like, so it gets that sort of bad rap tied into it. And it's like, but okay, like, is that necessarily a bad What isn't advertising thing? for other things? It's all just those just how it Batman is. movies are in conversation with what came before, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Batman 89 was in conversation with Batman Year One of the Dark Knight mm-hmm. Returns, mm-hmm. which were in conversation with Batman 66. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so people watched 89 and they felt like it was this adult take on the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Tim Burton doubles down on his aesthetic mm-hmm. in Batman Returns. And oh. people were like, no, thank you. They were oh, all wrong. I love it. I love it. It is. Opinion. It is. <laughs> and then Batman Forever was in response to the negative reaction to Batman Returns. Uh-huh. And it goes a little lighter, a little more mm-hmm. toyetic. Mm-hmm. And then Joel Schumacher is like, oh, well, they like Batman Forever. Well, now I'm going to double down mm-hmm. on my aesthetic and give you Batman and Robin. And people are like, hold up. Well, they, oh. they also rushed that one out, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. that was done so quickly that they just, like, it was Joel Schumacher and WB that were just like, just put more out now and they put so we can more sell out. more toys. And it was just like, okay. When's that like, ever gone before? They right? were like, we have George Clooney. Go, 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 go. Like, <laughs> we can't go wrong. <laughs> George Clooney hasn't made ever made a bad movie. Go, go, it, go, yeah, go. We, yeah. We, yeah, it doesn't matter at this point. Just go. Clooney, <laughs> Thurman, Schwarzenegger. How can this movie be bad? Yeah, it can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alicia Silverstone in, in like oh when goodness. she was popular. Whatever. Uh. <laughs> I think Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy is awesome. No, she's it it's a great crazy. pick. She yeah. owns oh, that yeah. role. Mm-hmm. I think it's because we. I'm wondering when we're going to get to see that. Are we ever going to get to see that again? Like, where's Ivy? We I'm gotta, sure we'll get an Ivy. I don't think we'll ever get a poison Ivy quite like that one again. Yeah. No, for I, sure. Because we probably won't get a Batman like that ever again. Or yeah, there's been rumors weird. that that um, Margot Robbie's trying to do a Harley Poison movie, Ugh. which would be. Oh yes, yeah. That's I don't know. just who, that, who would who would be? Are we gonna poison BMC Ivy? cast? Oh, Let's boy. cast oh, Poison okay. Ivy. Casting Poison Ivy. All right. With the idea of being cast against Margot Robbie. Yeah, yeah that, that would. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. for sure Harley for at least another yeah. six to eight years until <laughs> she's done know. with it. She yeah. can have it as long as she wants. Yep. Yeah. You get like sixty year old. I would be into it. Like an older <laughs> Harley yeah. Quinn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And just call it Harley like Logan, you know, just call it Harley, yes. you know. Old man Harley. <laughs> old man Harley. Old man in it. <laughs> old man Harley would be amazing. <laughs> you know, it just starts change? with her like smoking a cigarette. <laughs> She's on like a rocking chair, smoke, has yeah. a big stogie. Yeah. The trailer, of course, is Johnny Cash in it, because you know. Yes. Yeah, her, playing yeah. in the background, her, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um man i'm trying to think of i'm yeah. trying not to picture just try to go with a redhead because yeah. yeah. like it's what you want to do is mm-hmm. get somebody who's famously a redhead mm-hmm. but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case yeah i um, love yeah. Charlize theron in anything mm-hmm. and i mm-hmm. kind of like that idea yeah mm-hmm. i could see that yeah <clears throat> mm. i don't know because the yeah. problem is, I'm not good with the younger. Because now the the she thing is, you got to get somebody who has ten to fifteen years. Because mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you never know if there'll be like a role mm-hmm. that we need for the whole universe mm-hmm. and all of that. Yeah. So it's just like Amy Adams. No, no, <laughs> that's not gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's already Lois, so well, that's never. Chris Evans is the Human Torch, Captain America. So fair. <laughs> that's why you got to get on that TikTok, Todd, so you can get connected with oh, the younger generation like oh yeah that's yeah. my issue <laughs> that's what i want <laughs> yeah. then you'll have it all figured yeah. out mm-hmm. life complete uh, <laughs> Who would I like? charlie's theron is in my head now yeah I'm, i can't I'm, unthink I'm that i'm pretty yeah. into that because mm-hmm. i think she could do a little bit of that uma thurman <laughs> poison mm-hmm. ivy thing uh-huh. 
in her interpretation. Yeah. It's like a jungle inject, in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inject yeah. just enough camp mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the performance to I, match mm -hmm. what Margot Robbie does as mm -hmm. Harley. Mm -hmm. I'm and also be say, sinister as hell. I'm going to say Evan Rachel Wood. Hmm. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. See that? Yeah. yeah. That would be my pick for, uh, from Westworld. Mm -hmm. I think she would do well. And she's, oh. I think she's young enough. The, I, the, I just went to the internet because I'm out of ideas. Uh, <laughs> I did too. Anya Taylor Joy from The Queen's Gambit. She said everything now. I don't care. Yeah, she looks. She she can pull off the red hair, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's excellent. I mm -hmm. like that. Emma okay. Stone. That's just me. That would be me just being like, okay, Emma Stone, you got it. <laughs> I don't think it's, you're right for the role, but here you go. Yeah, I love yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> you're not right for the role, but I want you to be right for the role. Yep. Kind of Natalie Dormer? Yeah. What's that? Game of Thrones? Uh, Game of I Thrones? can see, yeah, I can see Natalie oh. Dormer in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Or uh, Katie Cassidy, who played, uh, um, she was in the Arrow. She was in Arrow. Okay. Um, she was um, Black Canary in Arrow. Okay. She'd be a oh. good fit too. Yeah, yeah. But they, in the, you know how WV loves to grab their CW people and put mm -hmm. them in the movies. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, Kenneth. Hey, Kenneth. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. while we transition into the main topic, uh, I've got I've got a fun fact. Uh, I'll, I have a series of fun facts. So, Batman. Uh, 1966 came out in 1966. Oh. Uh, followed by by Barbarella in 1968. Those are the first like two comic book movies. We've had uh, a very big string of them since then. Uh, who wants to take a guess what the longest gap in years was between comic book movies? Six years. A decade. Yeah. Thinking 68 to 78 between that Barbara and S Superman? That's what I was thinking. Mm. Ooh, Danger Diabolique. I got nothing. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> abstain. <laughs> uh, the longest gap it was four years, and it happened oh. twice. Uh, and the only reason why it was as sh short as it was because of one very raunchy X-rated book that came or movie that came from a comic strip called Fritz the Cat. Or Crumb. Yep. Uh, X-rated movie based off a comic strip by Robert Crumb. Uh, Fritz the Cat came out in 1972. Barbarella came out in 1968. And then two years later, The Nine Lies of Fritz the Cat came out in 1974. And Superman came out in 1978. Every other break was less than four years. And then the follow-up, when do you, th what year do you think was the string of, we never then didn't have one at least each year? There was, there was a year that was missed. There, when was the last time a year was missed? Like it, what was the start of the string from then? So 89. To I'm saying 89. Oh, uh, so I was going to say 89. I'll say 89. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Okay. It's got to be right well, in there. What about? Do we have one during the pan, like during the pandemic year, when like there just weren't any movies coming out? Oh, I'm sure. Just, I'm sure. There yeah, one. yeah, we had yeah, uh, probably uh, one. like Bloodshot. Okay. One yeah. Of, all right. Never mind. Never mind. Was 2020, yeah. and then 2021. Yeah. I think like Wonder Woman 1984 or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And probably like 30 others that we can't think of at the oh, moment. Yeah, I've, <laughs> my list only goes with like legitimate comic book movies because there's some well, like. Well, define IMDb legitimate. Rated ones. Like ones Is that are Man on Thing IMDb. on there? I don't have the list on me. I went oh. off of IMDb. <laughs> I want to see this list. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll post it later. Let me see the list. <laughs> uh, are you abstaining again, Jamie? I'm going to say 89 as well. Okay. Uh, very close. It was 1986. Howard the Duck started the string. Mm. And since 1986, we have had a comic book movie every single year in what one was, form or another. What Thanks, was 87? Howard the Duck. 
87 was it was actually oh crap what was it i don't know i went off a list and i saw like i just looked at the years of all the things and kept moving I'm up terrible with dicks. and i found the game like i didn't google search like this question i was like here's a list of them all i'm gonna figure it out got it got um, it got it Okay. But yeah, uh, so uh, that's a long list. I, I know it's very popular now and it got denser later on. Mm -hmm. But since 1986, there's been at least the one. Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit. TV movie, there you go. TV movie, the Spirit yeah. and also Little Shop of Horrors. That, there we go. Okay. Was that based on a comic book? I, I guess. It was based the on the Corman original film. Adaptate. Oh, wait, no. I think there was a comic book adaptation of the movie. Yeah, yeah, that don't count. That don't count. We went the other way. I didn't count those times. Yeah. The other yeah. way around. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't know. I closed my list down that I got this from. <laughs> it was IMDb. <laughs> we believe you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. the question at hand comic book movies as cinema, is that possible? Or are they just brain candy? Is this something that doesn't warrant without a few exceptions the joker is the easiest answer to put in here it was in the oscar contention all of that stuff but as a genre is it worthy of being considered film what uh is there a distinction is this a, a conversation that does that is irrelevant um well, I have a few. I have a few things just yeah, based on the sentence see. you just said. Yeah, go uh, for it. Uh, but comic book movies, like comic books, aren't a genre, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't think I don't see them as a genre because would you put um, Blade Two next to Old Boy, next to American Splendor, next to Ghost World? They're not going to be on the same shelf uh, or the same category on uh, mm -hmm. Netflix or wherever you're streaming it. It's a cool <laughs> playlist, though. Uh, I watch all of them. They're all great. <laughs> great weekend there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, like, you know, what is cinema? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd like a, a proper definition of cinema. Isn't it just a series of uh, frames moving, cut together into pictures. a moving image? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, cinema. Yes. And that's why, in my question, I I do put it as film because you know I'm when attacking you're you when you're I, talking. I, you know, for sure. <laughs> I encourage it. Because uh, when you're talking about movies, there's the things that you go see and the things that are blockbusters. And then you have film, the things that win Oscars and the yeah. things that you can dissect and get meaning out of. Is there meaning to be had in things that are supposed to be commercially successful and not meant to be art? Like, it's obviously art. I don't we don't need to get that based of a discussion because everything is art. Everything's in interpreted, but something that's not like, it's not designed to be like, I have this like thought and I want to get like a movement going. I don't want to like stir the hearts of people and make them live a different life. These are movies that are, are meant to make money. It's they're published and ran by huge corporations. If they didn't make money, this film wouldn't be happening. This isn't a heartfelt letter to humanity. Um, I mean, but all movies are profit endeavors. It's show business. Yeah. Even the independent films mm -hmm. need to make their profit and pay pay the people who got them sure. made. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so, like, like, to a point, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, t sure, to a point. But mm -hmm. and, and I know people... They're, they're, they're not usually the ones that make the most money. Yeah. Well, no, that's why budgets are important. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like that. That's why yeah. you have to do yeah. good financing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And they're not, you know, not every movie is the most popular movie. And I know that mm -hmm. comic book movies dominate the conversation, or I would say superhero movies dominate mm -hmm. the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but my feeling is, and, you know, everyone has their own opinion, but mm -hmm. like all movies are valid. All, all, all yeah. types of stories are valid as stories and mm -hmm. saying that one is a film and mm -hmm. the other is a movie i find that just to be snooty yeah, yeah i think it's supposed to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's the point mm -hmm. is is that that film is mm -hmm. a higher class and mm -hmm. and that people that belong to film or believe in film believe that they are better 
in in some ways. I I don't know that they're necessarily wrong, mm-hmm. um, but there is a, a an emotional mm-hmm. and informational exchange difference between I. I will refer to some movies as film and other movies as movies um, just casually and, Mm -hmm. but it's to convey something, right? Mm -hmm. Like a a difference. (laughs) Something deeply Um, there. That that being said, I I think that superhero movies are absolutely film. (laughs) So. (laughs) uh, So but by that logic then is every super movie film or are you saying that a super movie has the capability of. Being I think it has the capability to be, to be film. Yeah, and it depends on the person. I think I think there's an um, for me at least film elicits a, a, an emotional response um, mm-hmm. that you could that you connect with on a, a a basis of just life in general and and that it's something that you it's more than just robots fighting and you know mm-hmm. or, or or something like that. There there has to be just that little bit of level to it um and I, I think a lot of I, black panther and plenty of movies mm-hmm. can can do that mm-hmm. um some people might not see that that's okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> so i mean it almost like the distinction to me it sounds like you're trying to make is like there are movies and superhero movies and movies in general that are just like hey let's have fun villain good guy good guy defeats villain boom here we go we're done and then there's some that try to actually make a more emotional social political point where like you know black panthers at all is it's a superhero movie with cgi effects and black panther tackles a rhinoceros um it's pretty cool but it also has a story about (laughs) race relations and things like that Mm -hmm. whereas like you have a movie with you know, Batman and Robin, which we were talking about earlier, where it's just like Batman fights Rob fights. I almost said fights Robin. That would have been wrong. Oh, um, let's go. Fights <laughs> the Riddler and Two Face and tries to save the day. Like, and I can kind of see that point, but at the same time, it's also like then you start getting this idea of people take meaning from cert- from movies. You know, people take their own meaning. Someone I don't emotionally connect with Batman and Robin in any way, but maybe someone else does, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think... Someone, yeah. Yeah, someone could see the conflict of mm-hmm. Two-Face and be like, mm-hmm. oh! Mm-hmm. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, that could be a big thing for them. Mm-hmm. But someone else could be like, oh, guy with acid on his face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> He's mm-hmm. angry about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's absolutely <laughs> a subjective experience, and we mm-hmm. all have, like, our own points of views mm-hmm. on these things. And just because I'm saying one thing doesn't mean that I'm negating what Nick mm-hmm. is saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like for me, I can watch Howard the Duck. Mm-hmm. And I do watch Howard the Duck on my Blu-ray <laughs> over there. I have Blu-ray. And, I'm, I'm, Blu-ray. and my it's VHS copy and my DVD. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, because um, it's and, a film and that's how the director meant it to be watched. He saw but, into the future and was like, Blu-ray. Well, like I also <laughs> yeah. think... You know, we, there's a conversation to have about like intention and where does intention mm-hmm. on the filmmaker's mm-hmm. part come mm-hmm. into this conversation. Mm-hmm. But for yeah. me, it's all about the consu- consumer, the person mm-hmm. who is experiencing mm-hmm. the movie. And I can watch Howard the Duck and I can have an emotional experience mm-hmm. with that stupid effect mm-hmm. little puppet face. Mm-hmm. Like uh-huh. I do feel for Howard at multiple times during mm-hmm. that movie. And I'm in mm-hmm. awe of the stop motion in Howard the Duck. And I'm weirded out by the sexuality of Howard the Duck. And it makes me feel funny. Uh, but I have to reckon with that. Um, and, and I think there and does are... That, does it make it a better film? Because No, it's... but it makes it a film. <laughs> yeah. It right, makes yeah. it a film. And it makes it an emotional experience for mm-hmm. me. And on a value level, I can put that emotional experience of Howard the Duck for me personally, how higher than anything I experienced in the adaptation of Howard's end, you know? So like, I really do think it comes down to the viewer and what I object to with the conversation around movies versus film is this sense of gatekeeping and elitism where it feels like, you know, Marvel studios is making cotton candy for the masses. And that equals something less than, 
you know, uh, a Lars von Trier movie or something. And mm -hmm. I just, uh, I, I, I object to that on a very mm -hmm. core and deep mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. because my tears around the Winter Soldier are just as strong yeah. as the tears mm -hmm. when I'm watching Citizen Kane, which is a mm -hmm. great movie. Mm -hmm. it, that was pretty good. I should check it out. Movie. <laughs> oh, he called it. He called it. A it's movie. a movie. I do. It's love it. All it's movies. They are They're all movies. films. They're all, They're movies. all movies. <laughs> movies is the worst word. It's just movies. It's like, oh, that's a movie. Uh, it moves. Motion that's, pictures. Move. Oh, we're gonna get into that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna spend. An, I'm gonna spend a nickel at the movies tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my attempt to keep my devil's advocate <laughs> alive, because okay. I love all of this. Um, <laughs> So if it comes down to the consumer uh, and things that are elevated are usually considered film. Like mm -hmm. when you see the Oscar list, I love to go through the Oscar list every year. I find it interesting. I don't always agree. I'm like, this isn't very good sometimes. When was the last time a Bex picture was your favorite film? And that is... Of that year. Exactly it. Is... I will go through those lists, and I think it was like Parasite. I, I was going to say Parasite. I was like, this is but, like the, yeah. thing. Like, yeah. the yeah. thing. Good job. You finally I've got an, I've got an older it. one. <laughs> oh, yeah? What's yours? Uh, Gladiator. Oh. Gladiator was the last time I saw a Best Picture winner. I was like, I agree. Yeah. Gladiator was a... Mm -hmm. That was a whole when that hit. That was mm -hmm. I, I think people forget how big of a movie that mm -hmm. was when that was around. Mm -hmm. That influenced hey. movies for so long afterwards. There, the gladiator effect was real, mm -hmm. and oh my goodness, there's a reason because gladiator was fantastic. I um, like it. Oh, great. See, and that's okay. Fair. Fair. I don't like it anymore. I've rewatched it mm -hmm. in the last few years. And it did not age well. I don't yeah. like it as much as I remember yeah. watching it back then. Yeah. Um, I haven't I seen it in a few years. And I it's one of those movies like I loved at the time, but I mm -hmm. don't want to revisit. Like there's just nothing about go. it that makes me want to go, you know what? I'll watch that again. Now the soundtrack, if I need to get shit done in a day, I will blast the soundtrack. Hell yeah. But I don't need to spend another, like the movie's like what? Two and a half hours? Like I'm good. Like, like I'm mm -hmm. good with that. Yeah. So then does the definition of what like best movie need to change? One, we don't, we can't change that because it's all marketing and money's involved and all of those mm -hmm. things. If it wasn't the Oscars, but it was best picture is, does it matter if it gets them in a, the most emotional response? Because the best film most likely each year won't be seen by most people. Uh, no. The thing that we probably all could identify with, Parasite did really well because it was a really great film that then people really also actually loved. Where usually it's mm -hmm. something obscure, a lot of money was pushed to it, and it was good. It was good enough to be like, oh, this is serious, or it's mm -hmm. like got an interesting story behind it. Mm -hmm. um, does Should comic book movies, superhero movies, the things that the most people get at least even the slightest emotional reaction to be best film then each year, because it's the thing that's seen the most. And it's the thing that like that I most like, people consume. Does that make it best? I like the idea of uh, recognition. I, I, I feel like if, especially in this culture, in this world, that if you make billions and millions of dollars off of a movie that you have to have done at least something appealing mm -hmm. um, in, in some way, right? Like to, for first, cause that's, that's usually not a lot of people going once it's, mm -hmm. it's a larger group of people going multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something to be said about people enjoying the story that you have made to that extent and there's there probably should be recognition of that in some way it's yeah. it's it's kind of crazy that that someone can can uh make a story and put it out and make millions and millions of dollars and it's just kind of like eh that's popcorn stuff like mm -hmm. and just dismissed as 
as just that. <laughs> um, but whether that makes it best or not. Yeah. I mean, I think it I mean, comes down to like how much uh, value we give to awards bodies. You know, I think mm -hmm. we give too much value to the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny group of people selecting films in their industry, mm -hmm. and they're going to have a different perspective on it than we do. You know, for mm -hmm. my own personal like lists that I seek out, I find the critics and the uh, enthusiasts and the curators that speak the most to me. And when I find that person like Jacob Aller at Pace mm -hmm. Magazine, mm -hmm. and he says, you got to watch this movie. I don't know, Jacob likes that film. I got to go mm -hmm. check out that movie. I find the people that mm -hmm. align with me. And then mm -hmm. what do I do? I love ranking things. And then mm -hmm. I'll tell you what the real answers are of the best mm -hmm. movies mm -hmm. of the year, yeah. according to Brad. And yeah, that's yeah. the right answer. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that's why I've recently gotten kind of like, so when Rotten Tomatoes came around, it was all about like, oh, what's the aggregate score? Cool, that's a good movie. I'll go see that now. Mm -hmm. But like, over the past few years, it really feels like that Rotten Tomatoes, at least to me, has become nothing more than a meme generator. Like, mm -hmm. it's nothing more than a cannon fodder, discussion fodder thing where it's like, um, oh, you know, it gets a 50% of Rotten Tomatoes. Well, I love it. So why am I paying attention to this and really no longer looking at what the masses rate a thing and what the algorithm says the masses rated a thing and going like, okay, well, the people I respect, what do they think of it? Mm -hmm. Do I go out, like, let me listen to them a little bit, but then like, let me make my own decision. You know, like, you know, like the Eternals, people like just jump on the Eternals hate bandwagon. Like, ah, Marvel made a bad movie because it's under 50%. I like it. I do too. Like I now understand to an extent um the Batman v Superman people who are like rotten to me like you guys just don't get it. I'm like I understand your point now minus the whole Snyderverse Snyder bro level of it, but like so looking at the aggregate what does everyone think of it? I'm kind of past now. It's more like as Brad mentioned, find the people who you like their opinion and, you know, go with, go off them, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like Rotten Tomatoes, you know, what does 70% means? It means 70% mm -hmm. of the critics that we approve mm -hmm. uh, yeah. have yeah. liked that movie to mm -hmm. one degree or another. Mm -hmm. I give this movie two and a half stars, mild thumbs up. That's a yeah. positive review. Mm -hmm. So like a movie could have 90%. Mm -hmm. And it's ninety percent of people going like it's it's like, meh. It's, it's yeah. good. Yeah, because yeah. two and a half is not yeah. great. Mm -hmm. no, like two and a half is the middle. If it's a five mm -hmm. star, yeah. Star. If it's a yeah. five, fifty percent is a failing grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I don't watch if a movie is a two and a half to me. I'm okay that I watched it. I'm not watching it again. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Unless something culturally culturally relevant pops up, then I'll be like, fine. <laughs> I'll rewatch or if Nick's it. like, you've got to rewatch it. And I'm like, yeah. I probably will after like the 12th time. <laughs> uh, so amazing. It's good. So, You'll like it. Personal opinions. So, okay. What I've gotten from all of this is everything's bullshit. And uh, <laughs> you shouldn't listen to anyone, which is great. I love that. That's my yeah. fault. Love what you love. Except yeah. for yeah. us. Love what you love. Except Live your us. truth. Yep, and know yeah. your people. It's mm -hmm. it's basically just we basically just did life advice. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hellboy do what makes you happy and find your and circle of people that mm -hmm. you will listen to and get back. Great. Um, so I'm gonna go back to uh, a little bit of trivia. Does anybody want to outside of uh, these are not the random studios that got like a weird '90s superhero movie. I'm not counting those. Um, does anybody want to guess? I've got the bottom three worst rated comic book slash uh, comic book related movies on IMDb. Uh, does anybody okay. want to give a give a stab on uh, one or all three? Is is Daredevil one of them? No. Oh, Drink okay. Miller's The Spirit. Okay. Um. So IMDb. Electro two point I think it was two point two, two point three and two point one. Wow, but they're not, but they're not obscure. 
Either. Um, are they two of two? them aren't. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Not necessarily. Wait, that, what was that again? They're not, not necessarily, necessarily big two. Big two. One of them uh, is okay. ish. Okay. Ish. Because uh, um, mm-hmm. the bottom in MCU, the bottom two are Daredevil and. Because we had this conversation on another when we did your the trivia. Um, you're, mm-hmm. Are you smarter than a burrito? Uh, mm-hmm. The bottom MCU movies were like Dar- Daredevil and something else. To, uh, or no, Catwoman and Daredevil. It wasn't oh, MCU, Catwoman. It was just the big two. Catwoman yeah. and Daredevil were. Yeah, I have the same <laughs> exact everything. Um, Catwoman's way worse than Daredevil. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> 100%, but it had the same tomato. Yeah. It had the same IMDb rating. It had the same tomato critic and tomato audience. How crazy that all, both of those had all three of those metrics identical. Because they have <laughs> one person who is online going like, mm. I shall make it match <laughs> Daredevil. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, any last minute guesses? Is Catwoman one of them? No. Okay. I'm trying to think of all of them that aren't big too. Is it? Oh, Batman and Robin. Batman no, and Robin. God, that's higher up. That's oh, better oh, than Daredevil. Oh, oh. Rated higher than Daredevil yeah, I and Catwoman. That's I do too. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. right. I think it's it's still too low for what it is. So yeah. coming in at number three, the third to last is Steel, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh wow! Oh, from 1997, yeah. loosely yeah. based. Yeah. Hot steel and the like it's a real lose. It's like, ooh, it's ooh. kind of there. Um <laughs> it's a it's a stretch. Okay. Coming in at number two is actually a manga book, but I consider that comics. I don't know yes. why mm-hmm. it's just a genre of comics mm-hmm. that happen to read the other way. Um Dragon Ball Evolution, 2009. Okay. Watch yeah. it on a plane. Oh how was it for a plane trip? That's the place to watch I had a good it. time with it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I wish that's how I watched it. <laughs> I was like, what are all these white people doing here? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> that's that's how I watched the first season of Arrow. Oh, man, yeah. Was right? it playing from yeah. South Korea to nice. Germany? See, Arrow, like, first season of hours. Arrow was all right. great. I really like the first yeah. season of Arrow. Mm-hmm. Even the second season of Arrow. That's a whole other conversation. That's comic book TV, which the C, it was basically the CW plus like the Lois and Clark adventures. No, um, is there a difference between TV and cinema? Let's discuss. Oh, oh no. There we go. There's mm. the next topic. Mm. <laughs> no, it's just long form versus short form. There you go. And sometimes you, go. you have to watch the, you're watching the previews in the middle of the, the show instead of at the very beginning. Um, <laughs> and coming at number one, Son of the Mask, 2005. Oh. And Oh, wow. That's All the right. worst rated right. comic book movie. I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Kind of liked it. <laughs> there you go. 2005. I like that one's from 97 and two are from 2005, 2009. That's pretty great. So, I mean, Brad keeps saying he likes these things. So, like, what's your what's your least, like, what would you put personally at your bottom list comic yeah, book movie? That's one of my questions. So, perfect. Thank you, Jamie. Damn it. Sorry. No, you're sorry, good. That's you're great. Yeah. I love it. Comic book movie. Least favorite I comic book movie. I should have really researched that. I'm sure there's an answer where I'm gonna be like, that's the one. Mine's Dragon um, Ball Evolution. <laughs> I mean this but, almost got it right. <laughs> like I'm I'm the worst person to ask these questions because it takes a really rare and special film to make me mad that I watched it. And then suddenly I'm like, well, this got me so hot and bothered. I guess I also am glad I watched it because it's such a rare treat for me to be this fuming. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I, I should go to my letterbox uh, at Mouthwork. Follow me at Mouthwork on Letterboxd. It's in the description, too. You can find find the link there. Uh, The worst one. (laughs) I, 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 I might have one. I'm going to explain why Dragon Ball Evolution is the worst one, and then you okay. guys can explain the wrong opinion. Come back to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to so, check my letter. Dragon Ball so Evolution have... is the farthest thing from Dragon Ball that could possibly exist. It's a bunch of white people not doing Dragon Ball. Um, <laughs> the screenwriter, they started filming. The script was not done yet. And... <laughs> 
going going back now that it's out and done, the screenwriter has said, yeah, it was really bad and I did a really bad job on it. It is, you can't even, it's one of those rare movies where you don't even have to feel bad that you might be like attacking somebody who like really loved it and like, oh man, I'm so, I, oh, I feel bad almost saying something. No, he knows it's a pile of shit. <laughs> it is a pile of shit. It's an abomination to something that I was so excited for when I first heard about it. And then when I heard the guy who played Spike in Buffy was going to be Piccolo, that's when I was like, this is going to be garbage. <laughs> and it was. You, you bring up an excellent point because sometimes it's not even about how bad the movie is. And Dragon Ball Evolution, mm -hmm. just as a movie apart from Dragon Ball, is terrible. But it's yeah. the combination of it being a bad movie and being an adaptation that <clears throat> so fails its source material mm -hmm. that it hurts you as a fan of the, of the original. It's and and the I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I understand oh, that yeah. totally. Well, perfect segue. <laughs> I will say... Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern. Oh, okay. I'm gonna. I had to grab a beer. I think this is my time. To I thought. I thought that <laughs> Todd, so Todd is so. I thought that Todd like was that. gonna kick. Was just gonna straight boot me. So the fact that I'm still here, uh, and and he left is 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 good for me. But in my defense, when I first saw Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern, I knew absolutely nothing about Green Lantern. And after seeing the movie, I went, I kind of like this idea and this thing. And I, I enjoyed the movie. If it's, if it's, you know, uh, uh, wrong or not comic accurate, then okay. But I, when I saw it, at least, and I've seen it more than once, and I haven't enjoyed it more than once. <laughs> Taika Waititi is in Green Lantern. <clears throat> yeah really he is the sidekick of ryan reynolds in that film okay worth revisiting those scenes <laughs> all right i looked at letterboxd okay. now do we in case count... you don't in case you don't know brad i'm a, i'm a really big green lantern fan <laughs> and that wouldn't hurt, hurt. So it hurt. Hurts. okay i knew that it wouldn't hurt. hurt that's why i i, I was between two and i yeah, I, I that, that, one, way. that one hurt. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that right. was our I mean, shot. That was our shot, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. We had it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were like Green Lantern movie. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds for it. It's like mm -hmm. let's go. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. You'll be, you're mm -hmm. gonna get a great Green Lantern film in the future, and you'll be able to revisit Green Lantern. Yes. Oh, I yeah. not so well, I so, need the so, show. Give me the show. I just need a palate cleanser. It's been so long. <laughs> so, so Todd, when you what when they do another Green Lantern movie. Which Green Lantern do you want? Kyle. I mean, Kyle Rayner, but, okay. but honestly, now, Joe. Go the other yeah. way. What's the opposite of mm -hmm. Hal? Give me Joe. Give me the bisexual mm -hmm. black woman yeah. to completely yeah. palate cleanse this god-awful Hal Jordan mess. I think um, you'll get John before Joe. But, but John Stewart's going to be you'll get John And Joe. Kyle yeah. Rayner would be my dream. Or Alan Scott. Like, oh. Like you give us some Alan Scott, be like, well, thank you. But, which the show is supposed to be doing, which I'm excited. About. See, um, I want, I would love Joe just for the DCU like mm -hmm. memes of people just like, I hate this because it's a black oh, woman. It's like, it's like, yep. yes, mm, yeah, it's <laughs> delicious. I shall feed on your anger. Thank you. <laughs> I want all the lanterns, but I definitely want Guy Gardner at some point. So Batman can punch him in the face. Oh, yeah. I almost, I was just about to jokingly take you off of the show. And you said guy, because I'm like, nope, not can't have that. Yes. Please. If all guys there for is to get punched, I am. But I like I want a whole for arc for that guy. Yes. I, and, and I wanted to build to a sequel where he gets yep. punched in a, in the face. Is I that where man. is that where the film ends? It's just like bam. And he yeah. just And then the next one picks up immediately. Yeah. In, yeah. in so you're wondering how I got here, and it's Guy Gardner like holding his nose. Uh, <laughs> and I checked my letterbox. No Superman punch, like mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. face. Yeah. And I oh. have a question about 
comic book movies. What about sequels to films that were comic book adaptations, but not associated with any actual adaptation? So, like, hmm, sure. one of my least favorite movies of recent years, the lowest rated comic book movie that I have on Letterboxd is Men in Black uh, International. Oh, God damn. Okay. And that was so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 such a bummer of a movie. I just found it such a dull experience yep. that I just could not engage with it at all. So I gave uh -huh. it one star. I don't give many one stars, but I gave wow. it one star. Really? But is that a comic book movie? I would consider it because that's what they're... If you're going to say it's Men in Black, mm -hmm. you're putting out expectations that it's somehow tied to the thing you're saying it's tied to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would say yes, and yeah. that is a really good what's, answer. What's, yeah. what's, the, what's the next like, one, though? If we didn't, if we were like, no, then what? I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> so the I've only been in Letterboxd since 2015, okay. 2016. Mm -hmm. So Batman so, vs. Superman can be in there. Yeah, it's not, though. I love that movie. Uh, really <laughs> we need to talk about that. Marth, Marth is a great plot point, right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, we, we do not have the space for me to <laughs> No, we just leave it at that. Why it's I love great. that film. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, good. That's okay. it. Um, Move right on. Damn you, Nick. No one will My two-star rating my, is the next lowest rating, and it's for a recent film, and it was Morbius. Oh, oh I haven't seen okay. Morbius. Yet. I didn't watch I haven't it because... Either. It's I not heard the it wasn't worst. worth it. It's <laughs> not. You what? Two yeah, you, you yeah you gave it it's two stars. Worst, Men in Black International is the worst. This is the second worst. But, yeah, the second but, worst. Yeah, but it is the second worst. Matt Smith's performance in Morbius oh, no. does bring oh, no. some delight. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> That's it why I wanted screen. it to be good oh, because of Matt Smith. That he was the only reason I wanted number. that movie to be good. He's the two stars. Yeah, he is the one of the stars. There's a. The other the is, it's the yeah. bottom floor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he like bobs his head to camera and looks like down the barrel of the lens, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> I love Matt Way to go, Matt Smith. Uh, you made Morbius better than Men in Black International. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go to YouTube and just watch a compilation of his scenes because by now yeah. someone's done it, and I'll just do that. Probably. All I know is it's Morbin time or whatever. I have it. I have it on my uh, library. <laughs> Poll. So I think there's like 58 people in front of me that want to watch Morbius, and will Whenever probably take. Streaming. They'll probably take a year or two to return. It'll be on a streaming right. service before then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But just yeah. in case, yeah. can we just take a moment to celebrate the fact that Morbius gave us its Morbin time, which is obviously a reference to its clobbering time yeah. which is a celebration that stan lee and jack kirby could just never have imagined in 1960. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah wow the legacy the legacy <laughs> excelsior yeah. uh <laughs> jamie so like i was going through the list of like imdb to just remind myself of all of the ones that i've seen and every single one i was like that could be it, but also there was this one part of like, like I thought X Men Origins Wolverine. I was like, oh, maybe yeah. that. Ryan the Reynolds. Fight. <laughs> I liked the Gambit fight. Um, oh, I was yeah. like, maybe X Men Last Stand, like X Men Three, and I was like, okay, but Ooh. there's some good moments there. Yeah, was that one time when he's got to stab uh, yeah. the Phoenix? That's mm -hmm. I think my only. Oh fight. yeah, Ooh. I liked that oh. moment. Was Wolverine getting like. Ah! And then, like, you see the or adamantium, like, and it's like, but why is his whole fist adamantium? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Ah, stabby. Uh, Teenage, Mut uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Revenge of the Ooze. Ooze. I was like, okay, that one's yeah. pretty bad, but, like, young me loved it, so shut up. You know? I was like, Best. we have to throw down because <laughs> I love me some TMNT, too. So, like, it's, so it's just, yeah, it's it was like, and then... The ooze returned. <laughs> like Tank Girl was also on the list. I was like, but oh. I saw that just hanging out I, with my friends, and I didn't hate it. I know I love like, Tank Girl. It's that's that's like a cult classic right there. Yeah. So like, X Men Origins Wolverine just sort of like wins by default. Nice. No, that's a but solid even choice. then I'm still like, I liked the Gambit bit. I wish there would have been more, but like that means they spent like millions of dollars to make one scene that you are okay with. Yeah. <laughs> But the the Deadpool thing is just like oh just oh that hurts uh, so bad it's just uh Ryan Reynolds ruined would... almost ruined two superheroes thank God he went back and <laughs> fixed Deadpool <laughs> yeah 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 
Um, I, uh, those are all really good. You guys have great choices for terrible things. Um, <laughs> um, so, where is it? Nope, I don't have it. I have to look in my other notes. Uh, did, so, are, you you kind of put it in there that Howard the Duck is your favorite comic book movie. Is I didn't that say that. I didn't say okay. that. Okay, you spoke I said very I highly. I love Howard the Duck. Oh, Whoa. okay. So Whoa. let's, let's, let's <laughs> go from least let's let's palate cleanse this terribleness to go back to what's the favorite? Uh, so you know, I'm a firm believer that a movie is good, but it also depends on your experience while watching the film. So mm -hmm. context is king. And what you bring into that theater and where you were in that emotional state at that point can affect why you love or hate something as much as you do in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and my favorite comic book movie, I'd, I would love to pick something obscure. I would love to pick something uh, a little nerdier, a, a, a little more filmic. Um, the Joker. Yeah, no, I... Guess what though? I like that movie. Uh, <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> it won like an Oscar. Yeah. Um, it was really good. Two, two of them. But in 2005, I attended the Wizard World Philadelphia Comic Con, and I went to the DC Comics panel. And as you were walking into the big DC Comics panel on that Saturday or Friday, I can't even remember, they were handing out wristbands. And some people got a gold wristband and some people got a blue wristband and I got a blue wristband. And so we watched the panel. People asked their questions. You know, it's Jim Lee's up there and Dan DiDio and all, the, all those folks. And at the end, they're like, everyone with a gold wristband, raise your hand. And everyone in the gold wristband raises their hands. You're all getting a gift bag filled with DC comics. And everyone's like, yeah. But I look around and go like, there's a lot more gold wristbands. Uh -huh. than blue wristbands. Oh, they're smart. <laughs> What's the blue wristband? Everyone with a blue wristband, raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hand. All right. You're leaving through those doors and getting on those buses and you're going to the IMAX and you're watching Batman Begins two weeks before anybody else. What? what? And <laughs> all these DC nerds uh -huh. file into these buses. And we bust to the Philadelphia IMAX and we watch Batman Begins. And I've never wow. been happier That's in my life. That's incredible. And every That's a really good movie. It's, it's a really good movie. It's and a I think really like, good movie. <laughs> there before that film, Batman's entire origin had not been adapted in yeah. one singular narrative. And I think the way that Christopher Nolan did that, and he tied it in with the uh theme of fear mm -hmm. and how Fear is really responsible for the death of his parents because he was scared during the opera. He went out in a crime alley and he killed his parents with his fear. And then Scarecrow's got his fear. Mm -hmm. Ra's al Ghul's his fear. He turns his fear into his mask and into his weapon. I just love it. Mm -hmm. And we get to the end it's of that movie. Film. It's a great and he, film. Yeah, it's a great movie. And he turns, <laughs> and Commissioner Gordon turns over that Joker card. Yeah. And when that Joker card got turned over and that mm -hmm. IMAX sold out oh. screen... <laughs> it was like an earthquake. Yeah. The place exploded. It literally exploded. It's not yeah. there anymore. It Nerds. went to run. <laughs> <laughs> and then we all had to file back into these buses. Oh. And I sat Move on with your life. Yeah. And talking. And Dan DiDio and all these DC nerds are all just freaking out over how amazing Batman Begins was. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen a better movie. <laughs> Amazing. That's great. That's, great. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that would do it. Mm -hmm. Like I it's to a much smaller degree than that, but I will defend Dark Knight Rises so more I. yeah because of my viewing experience. I mm -hmm. chose a random IMAX viewing to go mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. I show up sitting mm -hmm. nice high middle, so I'm in mm -hmm. the right spot. And then this attendant comes out and goes, mm -hmm. Sorry, there won't be any previews tonight. Because this is a um, 85 millimeter showing of Dark Knight Rises, yeah. and the reels take up the whole thing. So there's no previews. We're gonna go right into the movie, 
and yeah, it's, there it is. Yeah. And it was the one of the best nice. movie experiences I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And Dark Knight Rises will always be just a little bit higher mm-hmm. because so when people dog shit on it, I'm like, but I felt I like it looked yeah. so pretty and it was like you could see the film grain because it was actual film grain and they didn't put some stupid CGI film grain on top of it. It was because it was shot on film and I saw it in film the way Nolan wanted me to see it. And the sound was incredible and I felt Bane's voice in my chest and it was this whole thing. Oh. I love Dark Knight Rises because yeah. of all of that. Yeah. But if people so, don't like it, that's fine. <laughs> So if we're talking about movie going experiences. I think my favorite was uh, with comic book movies was I was living in Korea at the time the Avengers came out and co- the way the movie releases work is Korea gets MCU movies two weeks before or a week before the U S does. So like I was Facebooking my friends, I'm going to go see the Avengers and I'm like, what? No, you can't. I'm like, Korea bitches. Um, <laughs> But we also, my friends and I went to a 4D showing, and it's one of those where the seats move. Okay. You yeah. like they have air will, that will blow in. They'll have they'll mm-hmm. have uh, water that will spritz you. They'll sh- the, the they'll shift. You'll like um they have their massage chair. So like mm-hmm. depending on the thing that's happening, you'll feel it in your butt. Like so when the scene where Coulson gets stabbed in the back, yeah, there oh. was a little thing in the chair that go- hits you in the back right there. Mm-hmm. You're just like. Oh fuck! Like what the shit? Mm-hmm. Um, but like the scenes where they're flying around New York, like that one that one shot where they're flying around New York during the Battle of New York, and your chairs moving as you're Amazing. flying around. Best experience ever, and it was also a really good movie. Yeah, like it was really good. And I was just like, came away to go, what the fuck? That was amazing. And like to this day, I still love watching the Avengers just because. It brings back those yeah. memories. Yeah. You remember yeah. getting hit in the back when Colson get that's like that's great. Yeah. I love I've only done D Box once and it wasn't for that cool of a movie. <laughs> we did we did we did that for in Disney World and it was like a Bug's Life or something and the, the bee stung oh. you. Yeah. Cool. It's just it was the same thing, but it was You yeah. all look like little ants from up here. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Amazing Spider-Man in the same way, and so like the web swinging oh, through, and you're, you're and gliding through. That. Yeah, that's that was cool. always really fun. Amazing yeah. Spider-Man would be my other picks for worst movie that I love. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, yeah. I love that's, Andrew. That's Garfield like my movie that I think that's my comic book movie. I think that gets shit on the most. That it's I mean, like people, it's people are feeling way. People love Spider-Man. So so much and yeah. it shows by how much they fucking care because i like amazing spider-man it's yeah. i prefer Raimi's because that was like vindicated mm-hmm. i'm selfish i am wrong okay. i'm right you know i'm right i swear i knew it all along uh that was like my angsty teen times though that, that will always be like my favorite spider-man but i loved garfield and i loved those movies yeah. they were fun yeah. I saw the original Spider-Man 11 times in the theater. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I saw it once. Like an idiot. I had a $3 <laughs> theater across from my college Ooh, campus. And I just, nice. I would go to class. I'd go see Spider-Man. I'd go to class. I'd go see Spider-Man. Amazing. That's awesome. I would do that if there was a $3 movie theater. Mm-hmm. Well. If I had that close, yeah. of, because we have that mm-hmm. one, but it's like a drive. And I'm like, I'd rather spend more and have a convenient yeah. trip. Yeah. So, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite comic book movie slash comic book movie experience, Nick? Um, I mean, my favorite, like my favorite sequence, or my favorite, like, uh, like I think for me, my most, my favorite theatrical experience of a comic book movie was, um, funny enough, uh, was it Far From Home? with mm-hmm. the, the drone fight mm-hmm. was i mean that for me that that scene i was sitting in the chair my jaw was on the f- ground and it was mm-hmm. just like <laughs> like that that was by far the best moment although uh one of my favorite re- it, it would be also i think the most recent would be the the batman movie um mm-hmm. the 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 most recent the batman um just because it got done and like opening night and so much recently there's been marvel movies and things Mm -hmm. it's a bunch of 
of people clapping and cheering at the end of movies and stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> but like the Batman got done and everyone just kind of sat there like, Oh shit! <laughs> Whoa, like, like, and then like we all kind of filtered out and just kind mm-hmm. of like, like went home, and, mm-hmm. and it was just like, like everyone was just processing, yeah, and 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 and, f- and feeling that that brain process of everyone mm-hmm. just trying to f- just figure out what they just yeah. saw was was really cool. It was like we got halfway home, and and with my wife, and it was just like, so that was. <laughs> like still couldn't like put into words mm-hmm. and, and stuff what what had happened uh so I, I think that might be mine maybe it's just because it's the most recent too yeah. but the movie's amazing um yeah, it's, it, it, it's a it great was. movie it's an amazing movie yeah 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 yeah, yeah. now we've yeah. all mentioned superhero comic book movies as mm-hmm. our favorite experiences mm-hmm. favorite oh. movies What's oh, your favorite non superhero comic book movie if you have one? Whoa. Hmm. Whoa. Hmm. Pulp fiction. Gun yeah. to my head. It's what I'm going to choose. I've seen okay. it the most. I watch it every six months. It's a movie that's important to my life and to like what how I look at movies I mean, and what it I is the movies. greatest film of all time. And so. but but but, but <laughs> Pulp, Pulp Fiction. That was your interest uh-huh. in Pulp Fiction? Yeah. But I mean, like, I'm still saying like a comic book movie oh, um, that's okay. not uh, a superhero yeah, movie. It's so it's still an adaptation mm-hmm. of a comic book. Pulp Fiction also. 300. Okay. I love that movie. Okay. Uh, it's right. another... Um, <laughs> this is another... It's tied to what happened around it. I mm-hmm. watched 300 maybe three times in, in the movie theater. Um, the second time, I... I went with different people each time. The second time I went with a very high testosterone group of men. (laughs) We watched it. And afterwards we were pumped because I'm looking, I think junior, senior year of high school, hormones going crazy. We just watched like 300 and we're all just fucking pumped. We yeah. went to a friend's basement and basically beat the shit out of everyone. We oh just, boy. we had airsoft guns. We had Christmas plastic candy canes. We were like hitting. We were going insane because we just had the craziest rough housing after that imaginable. It was probably from the outside, very homoerotic, but really we were just fucking going crazy. Um, it was intense. And I've never had a movie like look, thinking back on that, I get amped up thinking about that because that movie viscerally affected eight of us all at the same time, whether it be for good or bad, it affected us. And I had like, Three hours after the movie, I was having an experience because of that movie. Uh, so yeah, it'd be three hundred if I have to choose non superhero. That's the one, and it's because of that. <laughs> okay. Um, I have to pick. I would. I think Kingsman, Ooh. or nice. Kingsman, but I haven't seen it in a while. So I, uh, I mean. I would say Kingsman or Scott Pilgrim. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say oh, Scott Pilgrim. That's a really good call. Yeah. <laughs> Still say Scott Pilgrim. Scott I'm going to say both then. Scott Pilgrim and Kingsman. No, you pick the other one. I'm going to say Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> Kingsman's a good one to get stuck with. Stuck um, with. No, no, <laughs> that's terrible. Kingsman. That free bird sequence. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can probably think of that one too. Let's see. Oh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't beat the thing. shit out of anybody after Scott Pilgrim, so it's not up there. But Scott Pilgrim's definitely rewatched yeah. way more times. That's yeah. a yearly watch. If well, Lisa Indiana, was here, that would be her favorite comic book movie. Actually. Just overall, yeah. that's cool. Because that's the thing you have to talk about: movies that are like comic movies that are like really good, and then there's ones that you can rewatch over and over and over again. Like I recognize the Joker. Great movie. Great yeah. comic book movie. Never gonna watch it again. Nope, that's it. No, I'm good. <laughs> I, saw it. I, I, I understood sure. it. I'm mm-hmm. good. Yeah, and that's yeah. fair. Meanwhile, like I can put on Scott Pilgrim vs. the World anytime while I'm working, if mm-hmm. I just need something in, in the background. Same with like like one of my favorite go-tos to watch when I'm working is like Doctor Strange. Like, I can put nice. Doctor Strange on on my iPad while I'm working, have a good time with it. 
Um, but yeah, I yeah. think of Scott Pilgrim a lot when I pee. Because I just picture the gauge going down. <laughs> and it just makes me smile all the time. Because I'm like, I wish that happened in real life. Because that this be might be yeah. This might be borderline. So I, 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 I could... I could see where you would, if, if someone was like, no, that's a superhero movie, then I'd be like, okay, fine. But I, I would also, aside from Scott Pilgrim, I would pick uh, uh, the trilogy of, of Unbreakable, Split, and Glass. Oh, um, is one of yeah. my absolute favorite things in my, my wife still has not, she's seen Unbreakable, but <gasps> she has not seen the other Split. Ones? And so she doesn't know they're they're tied together either. Yeah. And I'm still oh. trying. I'm still trying to figure out how to like. Oh, we should like just watch but Unbreakable like, and like oh yeah, let's watch it. Yeah. And oh, hey, let's like trying to just figure that out yet. Yeah. But <laughs> Split watching Split in the theater. Talk about a great Ooh. experience. <laughs> yep. When that ending came and you heard that music, you're like, hold uh -huh. on, what's happening? Huh? Hey. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was a, a twist. Moment. Like I was ready for it to be like, oh, we're out of twist, right? It's over. Yeah. We're done. And then it's like, oh no, here's the biggest twist. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Like, oh. so good. I haven't seen any of them. Oh, uh, I have to confess, oh. I haven't seen any of them. Well, they're connected, and that's all we <laughs> I, say. And I apologize. Oh, oh, I don't, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think I that's a spoiler. That, I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say it's a, I'm it's on a the spoiler necessarily, but it's they are. Oh, you should check them. Out. It's, yeah. it's yeah. And, Unless and you those, like, I know I do know some people that hate M Night movies, um, and and, and and stuff like that. I, I I I'm not <laughs> one of them. Are there? Uh, <laughs> I just finished old the other night. Like I, I watched, sure. I watched three quarters of old and then made it like two months and went, Oh shit. I never finished this and finished it and went, Oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did you watch the happening? Yes. That's one of my favorite ones. All right. Well, we'll agree to Rock disagree. That's my favorite. It's one of my favorite ones. All right. Uh, well, the only one, the only one that people have a, that people typically don't like that it's like okay is the village that's like i know oh, i like the village. it's fine it's fine i put the village at the top of his movie do you oh, okay i would not the top top that not top. like above oh, towards the top crazy. okay towards i was like top. it's better than unbreakable no no no, no. <laughs> that's better. i would put it third honestly i'd put First. unbreakable six cents and then the signs village. yep oh and then signs after the signs. Okay. yeah okay. Signs um, and then the happening my friend i was like I love the happening. I love that the sixth sense is a good movie without the twist. And I think that's what yeah. is the problem with the happening in some of his other films are they bank on the twist being good. Whereas I think the village sixth sense unbreakable, they're good movies. And then there's a great twist. Agreed. And that's the mm -hmm. thing. That's the formula is here's this amazing movie. And now whoo, you didn't see that coming, and that's what's the best part. Well, but, and, old, uh, old is interesting because it's not a good movie with a great twist. So yeah, it goes the other <laughs> It's so campy. It's so it's much fun so to bad. watch. Like, <laughs> yeah. I had a the whole time, time I was watching it, I was like, what is this? Like, what is yeah. happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what's yep. great about Unbreakable as a comic book movie, which it most definitely is, but it doesn't have oh, a source yeah. material, right? Yeah, right? It's all yeah. about comic books, and it's all about mm -hmm. superhero tropes, and it's all about comic book collecting, mm -hmm. and uh, how comic book collectors are the worst people on Earth. And <laughs> that's Agreed. Unbreakable. Um, <laughs> or, oh. yeah. I've so, seen enough of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go to my, enough cons, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is great. <laughs> my pick for best uh, non-superhero comic book movie is Old Boy, which is based on the mm -hmm. Korean comic. Yeah. And uh, that movie messed me up. And that is a movie that I don't love, like, oh, it's Friday night, it's Saturday night, I'm going to pop on Old Boy. Let's yeah. watch no. Old Boy. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah. it is an experience that mm -hmm. uh, I do revisit. Uh, mm -hmm. I just have to like you know have a few more of these old fashions before mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> get, get the right right yeah the right uh, frame yeah. of mind for it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And then if we're yeah. talking like comic strip adaptations, I love Dick Tracy. I love oh, Dick Tracy. Oh yeah, I, I love that movie. Yeah, Dick That's Tracy. Great. I love that movie. I really I, childhood nostalgia makes me go Dennis the Menace. Because I, I really love the Dennis the right. Menace. Um, I love uh, Richie Rich. 
Uh, God, okay. Richie Rich. I remember that movie. But Dick Tracy's great too. Uh, I also love The Phantom. Same era. I, that's what, I, I, when he, when Nick was talking, I was like, "Oh, I need to remember to mention the Phantom because I yeah. saw that when it first came out, and I was young when that came was, out." Was was Rocketeer? And yes. I had uh, Rocketeer. Yeah. I had Rocketeer. The Phantom Ring. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I hope I get to punch somebody someday to be able to leave the imprint." <laughs> <laughs> but the Rocketeer is in probably my top five comic nice. book movies as well yeah. that's a yeah. masterpiece mm. i remember renting that from the grocery store to watch it same with like dick tracy and loving it yeah uh how does everyone feel about the watchman movie it hasn't been brought up <laughs> and i love it it's a big thing i do too thank you i, I need to I, re-see. I, I, I need to rewatch it i honestly i remember seeing it in college and being like okay this is good but I wasn't reading comics at the time, and I feel like coming back to it be a different experience. The director's experience. cut is the way to watch it. I just, yeah, I the director's I have a, cut. I have a love hate relationship with Zack Snyder. I just, sure, fair. I really, fair. Love I, I love, 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 love Zack Snyder's movies, but I hate his fan base so much. <laughs> It's like, that's part of it. I think if, there's, no, if, if, if the other people that also love these movies could just shut the fuck up for a little bit, <laughs> there's times where I'm just like, it's like, it's, it's okay, dude. We don't need a slow mo of every big thing you want us to see. Like, it's yeah. okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, Have you but that's watched- my only major complaint. And that, like, the Jesus complex of characters sometimes, where it's like, yeah. Superman is Jesus. It's I- like, okay, yeah, we, yeah. I like okay, being a good Jesus complex. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Have you seen Zack Snyder's The Legends of Gahul, the animated owl movie? Yes, I have. Oh. Love that film. The slow motion owl fighting. It's in so that much. Film I can't. I can't get next past level. It. It's okay. <laughs> next out. level is one next way to level. put it. <laughs> next level good. Like like too many levels. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, it's all next the levels. level. You know, you're at a good level, and then you go to the next level, and it's too much. And then you went to the next level, and, and then it got you went even went better. A, yeah. And you <laughs> kept going, and What's, you went. Where are all the levels? <laughs> no, no. What's Legend really bad is when it influences other movies. So like, we were watching Wonder Woman the other night. And all the times uh-huh. I had to go, oh, a Zack Snyder slow mo cut because yeah. that was when they were having Zack Snyder influence everything. I was like, okay, we get it. All right, he was the so architect much. of the yeah. the thing, and it wasn't a thing. Yeah. But I love yeah. the director's cut Watchmen. Uh, yeah. I love the regular Watchmen. I watch it. I had it in theater. I have it on Blu-ray. I need to get it on 4K. I'm assuming it's coming out on 4K. Have you watched it's on 4K, the, yeah. the I, Tales of the Black Freighter cut? Mm-hmm. Where they like that's. It's really cool. That's self-indulgent and delicious. Oh, it is. And because <laughs> I, I love Watchmen and I never mm-hmm. recommend it to new re- like I mm-hmm. love when it's on a new reader's list. I'm like, you guys are no. dumb. That is a <laughs> terrible choice. <laughs> um, but I really love the Watchmen, and I think that he did a really good job. I think next Zack Snyder is best when he tries to stick to a formula that is already established. Zack Snyder is really good at accentuating things. Like I think 300 was great because Hey Zach, tell this story. And Zach was like, okay. And it was good. When he goes off on his own, is when I tend to have issues with Zack Snyder. And it doesn't jive with me as well. Uh, I mean, for for me, like I was so on Zack Snyder's tip till like Man of Steel. Like, like from Dawn of the Dead, like the mm-hmm. fact that he made a Dawn oh. of the Dead movie, which I thought was really, really great. And then he does 300 and he does mm-hmm. uh, uh, Legends of Kahul, which is also awesome. Uh, yep. but, and Watchmen, I really liked. Yep. And, and then Man of Steel, I didn't really like connect with Man of Steel. I had a, a my buddy Darren like, loves Man of Steel. I'm just oh, not him on that. Yeah. But it, means like Batman, it needs hope. Superman Returns is better. <laughs> I'm not going there, my friend. <laughs> uh, the Richard Donner cut. Brandon, Brandon, yes. Brandon, Brandon Ralph is, is, Brandon the, Ralph is the best yes. Superman we've had since Christopher I'll, Reeves. I'll let you say that. <laughs> and that's why I like Returns more. Is just because you had the Superman, give him the script. How do we? How do we feel about Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor then? Fuck. Well, that ended up being real good because fuck yeah. that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't even like Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor, but I love Superman. Whoa! I'm sorry. Okay. Where did you happen like that? I, you know, so there's been I, no good Luther. Has, it hasn't been. They're not great Luther. 
not if you, you love about? the character of Luther or a certain ah. version of Luther that you can find in the comics, you, you know. So okay. who oh who's who's should be the Lex Luthor then? They had to bring him know. in. Who should be Lex Luthor? Uh Jesse Eisenberg again. Oh. <laughs> but do it different. Um. <laughs> but do it more jolly hair. ranchers again <laughs> more jolly ranchers. more jolly yeah yes yeah. the jolly rancher cut yeah, the jolly rancher i i cut. still think brian yes. cranston could knock that role out sure. oh, yeah. 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 Still, yeah. i still think i i think there's still time that if if they were to like make that decision tonight <laughs> and then the movie came out in two to three years. It would be, uh, it'd be really good. Um, I really like Smallville's Lex Luthor. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Michael yeah, he great. Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum. Yep. Uh, yeah. he's great. Um, I think he was really good Lex Luthor and aging. I think he's like out of the business now. I think he's no, done with it. I mean, he pop. He's like a buddy of uh, James Gunn, so he pops up in like James Gunn's things. Yeah, but like he's not like he's not all oh, over the place. So he's I getting that convention really money now. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's that convention like, money where it's at. Uh, but I, I I think he was great, and that'd be a nice pull uh, for a Lex okay. Luthor. The animated series Lex Luthor. Yes, is the yes. best. Lex that's Luthor. the one. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. The Harley Quinn one is also very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Everything in that Harley Quinn series is good. Yeah, I love yeah. Um, yeah. my favorite Lex Luthor in the animated. Uh, I think it was Justice League or maybe mm -hmm. Justice League Unlimited uh, when Flash and Lex yeah uh, switch spots and Lex Luthor's like, "I'm gonna finally figure out who you oh, are." Yeah. And pulls back the mask and he's like, "I don't, I don't know who I, you are. <laughs> <laughs> who is this." <laughs> <laughs> So was that uh, was that Tom that Taylor when, when I'm not doing great? Was that uh, Injustice? No, that was no. Uh, just the animated. Just I think like, it's Justice unlimited. Yeah. Oh, oh, was it okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was the animated show, and it just was like my favorite thing. I'll go on YouTube and watch that clip just to perk myself up when I'm feeling like I need something <laughs> to laugh about. <laughs> Makes me so happy. Yeah. Well. Thanks, everybody. Um, I have oh, one wait. last. Oh, yeah, go for it. I had a question I was going to ask. Who's your favorite? Because I asked this on Twitter and didn't get much response, but who's your favorite comic book director? Like, Thanks, not, not the best director that's done a comic book movie, but your favorite director doing comic book movies. James Gunn. Matt James Reeves. Gunn. <laughs> Since James Gunn was taken, as it Matt Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like the person who absorbs the most from comics and then mm -hmm. tries to replicate mm -hmm. them in some way in mm -hmm. their movies is Guillermo del Toro. Mm -hmm. And oh, you know, he's done man. Blade 2, which mm -hmm. and Hellboy. So thinking good about Del Toro. So oh, no. like when you no. watch Blade 2, he knows you, know, you don't like, like him now. <laughs> the commentary track of Blade 2 he pinpoints like panels from comics that he tries to replicate like mm -hmm. Dr. Manhattan being uh, reformed in from, like the Dave Gibbons art is what he took as inspiration for the Reapers exploding in ultraviolet light. That's so okay. I feel like that's, that's my answer. Good choice. These are three good choices. Jamie. Don't screw I was going to say gun. I was going to say no, James yeah. Gunn. Yeah. I had, hey, I, had a, win. <laughs> I had a couple friends say Ra Sam Raimi, and I was just like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Sam Raimi's so Sam Raimi. Yeah, it's very <laughs> Raimi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Guillermo, I have, uh, I don't know if you've seen them, but I have, I have the Guillermo del Toro tarot cards. Yes. Del Toro tarot cards are like right my over favorite. There. They're amazing because I DM a lot, so I'll use them for in my D my D and D games. I'll use those as my tarot cards. I love them. Del Toro is a great choice, but Gun is the best. Thank you, Jamie. Um, <laughs> my final question is: We've talked about favorites and least favorites, and film and not film, and all of these things. But um, I think one of the best things, one of the amazing things about movies is nick when you talked about how everybody left batman being quiet and brad when you were like everyone went on the bus and you all experienced that it was all super amazing things that all these little things tied up into one ball 
becomes this amazing experience that will last every time you watch that movie from then on. Maybe we've already answered your two, but what's the comic movie that made you feel the most that really got inside you and it didn't matter what other people thought. It didn't matter. But even if it's negative, but what's the movie that really just like sank its teeth in and wouldn't let go? Hmm. That's a, I think I think one of my most emotional movies, I, I don't know if it's odd or not, but would would actually be Ant-Man and the the father daughter dynamic and stuff being a being a dad and just like watching him care about his daughter and stuff is just like so yeah that's fine because i only have is it daughter, i only have my daughter half the time and every time i watch ant-man and in, yeah. in, the, in the subsequent one he's doing like his best to make the little time that he has amazing and have forced to be away from when Ant-Man comes back after the snap yeah. and mm -hmm. lost all that time when he saw his daughter mm -hmm. grown up. It's how I feel because like she's gone for a week, but she'll learn something when she's gone for that week or she'll oh. experience something and I'll see these little bits of growth that I wasn't there for. And it like is turned to 11 and Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ant-Man, uh, uh, end game, all those are infinity, whatever the last one, uh, always hits me so fucking hard. Cause it just gets right in here and makes me go. <gasps> and I just yeah. Hmm? yeah. My, my, yeah. my second one would be closely tied to the same thing and, and would, would also be MCU of the, I love you 3000 line. Yeah. Um, would, be, would be the other would be the other one that mm -hmm. that one that one got me good that too. gets you <laughs> yeah every yeah. yeah every time that one will get me yeah. <clears throat> the first time i cried during an mcu movie first time <laughs> uh was what? avengers mm -hmm. in 2012 mm -hmm. and it's when bruce banner shows up on the moped and he does the whole like that's my secret mm -hmm. Cap, mm -hmm. I'm always angry. Mm -hmm. And it was such a beautiful distillation mm -hmm. of Bruce Banner and the Hulk mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. relationship. And how Banner understands. <laughs> no one else understands really what's going mm -hmm. on in Banner. Like the, you know, I once said like the real civil war in the MCU is Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Mm -hmm. And I would like that explored more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like the first time I cried. Mm -hmm. But I think the movie that um, did all the things the most, like where, like from the moment the logo came up mm -hmm. to the credits, I was at 10 of every emotion, mm -hmm. depending on what the scene is, whether that's excitement or sadness mm -hmm. uh, or melancholy or whatever. Mm -hmm was Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. And that logo comes mm -hmm. up and it's changing with the multiverse mm -hmm. of the logo. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the movie goes on and it's it's replicating panels and how mm -hmm. you read panels and it's using captions and thought mm -hmm. balloons and four color printing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know then it's doing all these crazy animation tricks with frame rate. Mm -hmm. Like the, the undertaking that, is the most, that it took to make that movie. Yeah, is, it's the yeah. most it's yeah. movie movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That whole movie is just hits you in everything, especially like when the when the uncle dies. Yeah. It's just like oh god, mm -hmm. hits you hard. It hits yeah. When mm -hmm. the Spider Man of Miles's existence mm -hmm. dies, Chris mm -hmm. Pine like. Mm -hmm. I was already so invested mm -hmm. in that character because right. of the tricks that they were using. Yeah. Yep. That when he died, and then when he when Miles goes to his funeral and listens mm -hmm. to Mary Jane, mm -hmm. and Stan Lee shows up to mm -hmm. be Stan mm -hmm. Lee and make a buck mm -hmm. off of a dead Spider-Man, like this or, uh, is the best. <laughs> when he goes to the grave before he meets Peter B and he's just like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Like that was yeah. 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 I um, need to watch it again. 
Like I think I might watch it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I'm watching it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's a, the 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 scene that the first time I cried at an MCU movie, and it will still make me cry, is um Yondu, mm. the Yondu death. Um, and so like a lot of times I will defend the villain of Guardians of the Galaxy two because I hear a lot of people being like. Oh, it's a mustache twirly, like basic. I want to defeat. I just want to take over the universe because I'm evil, and there's that's all I really need to know. For me, growing up with a dad who, um, a little bit personal, it was it was always like he loved me, but no more than he loved himself, mm. and would only ever hang out with me and spend time with me if it and if it served his own agenda or his wow. own gains. And to see that portrayed in a MCU movie where Peter's dad shows up and Peter has this moment of like, my dad, we're back together. I can have this relationship again. This is something I can have now. And then for it to be torn away and then for him to realize, like, you could just say the line, he was your dad, he was your father, but he never was your daddy. And I just like start weeping. Mm -hmm. And like just that whole, like I still like we we play that for my daughter a lot. We play the movie for my daughter a lot because she loves Groot, <laughs> and like so I'll be like I'll just have it on for her when that scene comes up. I'm just like, M mommy needs to go to the other room right now, hon. <laughs> watch the movie. Um, I'll be right back. I'll be right, I'll be right back, and then I'll come back, and she's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "No," <laughs> um, and like. Yeah, so I think that was the first one that the MCU like absolutely got me. And it was such fucking bullshit because that's a fun movie. And then at the end, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you heard James Gunn translate Groot's last words before he fades away in Avengers Infinity War? Yeah, it's like, Dad, yeah. like, yeah. Uh -huh. I remember reading yeah. that tweet. <laughs> I'm like in a Starbucks uh -huh. somewhere mm -hmm. and I just start bawling. Mm -hmm. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh. yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, thank you everybody for being both honest and vulnerable. Um, <laughs> it uh, really shows how across the spectrum these movies really are. Mm -hmm. And there's fun to be had. There's serious feelings to be had. And no matter who you are or what you like, mm -hmm. it's just good times. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter because when it comes down to it, life is short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do what you love. Enjoy what you love. And if someone tells you that you shouldn't love it, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> because what you love is awesome. Doesn't matter what you love, unless you're terrible. Uh, I, there will be an asterisk next to this. Um, but uh, in terms of geekdoms, it's all good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for being on, uh, especially Brad Gullickson, comic book couples counseling tell them where they can find you and then they can go to the description and click on the link yeah thank you for having me on this was uh, a, an absolute treat i had a great time chatting with all of you and uh, I, I respect this show i respect all of your opinions so much and uh, you know you get me excited mm -hmm. to go watch some comic book movies so <laughs> thank you for that mm -hmm. uh but if you want to you know if you're like I need more of this guy. I need more mm -hmm. rambling of him. Mm -hmm. uh, head on over to Comic Book Couples Counseling. But don't worry, it's not just me screaming into a microphone. I co-host that show with my lovely wife, Lisa. And what we do there is we take a superhero couple, uh, sometimes iconic, sometimes not so iconic. And not a superhero couple. No, no, no. A comic book couple. All the genres. All the genres of couples. And we pair them with a self-help book and we use that discussion to help better understand the characters, but more importantly, to help better understand ourselves. We also do various interviews. We're building up to Comic-Con uh, next weekend and we leave on Tuesday and we've mm -hmm. like lined up like a whole ton of interviews with cool people. Uh, we've got Matt Kent coming on the show to talk about mind management. We've got Scott Snyder coming on to talk about his latest batch of comiXology originals. 
We have Tom King and Elsa Chartier coming on to talk about Love Everlasting. And we have some really wild things that are going to happen at San Diego Comic-Con that I can't talk about yet. And they probably won't happen because that's how life is sometimes. But I'm hoping. <laughs> anyway, comicbookcouplescounseling.com at CBCC Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. You guys are awesome. This has been... Thank you, Todd. Yeah. Uh, make sure to check those links in the description. Uh, go like and follow and do the things in the social media space that shows Comic Book Council comes comic book couple counseling that they're awesome you can't quickly say that because you got to do it every week if you do it every week then you can do it uh <laughs> that means brad's gonna be on every week um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah go do that um and yeah make sure to just be nice to everybody yeah that's all for everyone media.com Spain yeah, that uh, for everyone media.com, and you can like and follow us. We're in the description too. Go do those things, that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, bye. bye. bye.